Welcome to our second section. In this section, we're going to be talking about understanding the different professional titles. So who are the key professionals that you want to be considering to work with your child? First, there are tutors. Second, we have reading specialists or reading tutors. Third, there are learning specialists. Fourth, there are educational therapists. And fifth, there are educational coaches or mentors. Now, there are other terms out there as well. We just picked the ones that we use the most personally, and we are going to be defining those. Our definitions may not necessarily match up with other people's definitions, but this is how we feel it pans out. Professionals use many titles. These are a few that can help students with dyslexia and other types of learning disabilities. You really, our intent here uh, is to try to reduce the amount of confusion because oftentimes there is a lot of confusion, but we're going to hopefully not uh, confuse you further, but we do want to try to uh, define these types of titles so that it'll help you a little bit as you begin to do your own research and figure out who's best for your child. Great. Thanks. So the first type is a subject-based tutor. They do one of four things. They reteach specific school subjects like math, Spanish, or science. They also assist with homework. What's more, they help with test preparation. Finally, some offer some study skill suggestions. There are reading specialists and reading tutors. Sometimes people call themselves a reading specialist, other times they call themselves a reading tutor, but they're really often one and the same. First of all, they offer multisensory, systematic, and explicit instruction. Second, they tend to implement specific approaches like the Orton-Gillingham approach to reading, and we offer more information about that in a handout that you can download. Third, they also offer direct instruction in fluency and comprehension. And fourth, they should be well-versed in applicable assistive technologies, software, as well as applications. I, I think this is a really good slide, Eric, and I think critical points here, and I wanted to, to reinforce a couple of things that you said. In this day and age, you know, obviously the vast majority of kids we see that have learning problems have issues with reading, and writing, and spelling. So the vast majority of people that you're going to be looking for are going to be hopefully experts in this area. And there has been a lot of discussion that, uh, of course, Orton-Gillingham is a very solid approach that can help you very considerably with your child's reading skills. But it's important to recognize that it really should be necessary, but not necessarily sufficient. Because we now know from the science that kids can also specifically struggle with fluency and comprehension. And that's reflected in different areas of the brain when we do brain research. So it's really important that you understand what these reading specialists do, what or Gillingham is, and what else they can do beyond that to make sure that there's also direct instruction, fluency, and comprehension. Great. Thanks, Michael. And then there's the learning specialist. A learning specialist teaches compensatory learning strategies. And a compensatory learning strategy is where you teach a student to utilize their strengths to compensate for their weaknesses. A learning specialist also utilizes multisensory instruction. And when we say multisensory instruction, we're talking about using all the different senses, like visual, auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic. I also go into other types of multisensory instruction like verbal and rhythmic and melodic, interactive and sequential and simultaneous, but that's not always what everybody else does. A lot of people just stick to the four senses. But a learning specialist also instructs students on mindfulness and metacognitive approaches to learning. And what this means is metacognition is your cognition of your cognition. So it's being aware of your own thought process. And when you become aware of your own thought processes, then you are able to have more control. So it helps you with attention, for example. If you are aware of your own attention, then you can control your own attention. 
A learning specialist also implements study skills and intervention strategies. What's more, they help with school accommodations, and they also teach advocacy skills so that they teach not only the parents but also the kids on how to advocate for what their personal needs are. And then finally, they tend to be versed in assistive technology, software tools, educational websites, such as the Khan Academy, and applications. This is another really good slide. And remember that the purpose of these slides is for us to give you an overall view of how some people describe their titles. And some people are going to say, you know, I, I do a bunch of these things, but I don't call myself a learning specialist. That's fine. What's important, I think, and I've been thinking about this, Erica, is that the particular skills that we're talking about are important for people to understand in relationship to what their specific child's needs are. So the more they educate themselves about these different types of specialist strategies, the more they're going to be able to make informed decisions about who's best for their child and what kinds of skills and strategies to really bear down on. We want to clarify versus confuse, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's an educational therapist, and they're very similar to the learning specialist, so they do many of the same things that a learning specialist does, but they tend to do something a little bit more. The key term is the therapist. In order to use that term, I personally believe that you have to have a significant amount of education in psychology. Again, they do very similar things to the learning specialist, such as teaching metacognitive and compensatory learning strategies. But then they also provide cognitive remedial training in areas such as auditory discrimination, memory, visual discrimination, maybe processing speed or working memory. They also are versed in strategies that address the social and emotional aspects of learning. And that's bringing in, again, more of the psychology piece. So you might need to be coaching your kids on more socially appropriate behavior or even to cope with a teacher or other kids that are bullying them. And then finally, an educational specialist wants to have expertise in working with students who struggle with executive functioning and attention. And I think learning specialists do tend to do that as well, but that's very important for an educational therapist to have that kind of expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with everything, all the points that you made on this slide. I think uh, the emphasis, again, is like you said, is therapist equals some kind of skill with regard to the social emotional aspect. Yeah, for sure. And then finally, we have the educational coach or mentor. And what they do is they tend to examine the present circumstances and then define personal goals. So it's almost like a life coach. So it's very similar to that. And they also provide motivation and support to overcome obstacles and challenges. What's more, they offer strategies for personal growth and development suited for each person's individual circumstances. And finally, they tend to address specific personal issues as well as transitions in the client's personal life and schooling, maybe such as a transition to college. Is a really great time to work with someone with this kind of expertise. Yep. The important thing here is that the coach or the mentor has to understand what they know and what they don't know. So I think uh, helping somebody transition to college is really great. They just need to make sure that they have the skills, the education, training, and experience to handle the people that are coming into their office or their practice. Join us in the next video finding the best person to work with your child.